welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel special yes. starts so uh, we had a 39 year old male enrolled uh, into er with complaints of tingling sensation on initial primary examination airway was patent patient was talking in one full sentence breathing saturation was 99% at room air with 18 respiratory rate bilateral chest equal raise in movements uh, yes. circulation patient had a heart rate of 140 beats per minute uh, and uh, BP was 130 by 70 mmHg and peripheral pulses were palpable. At this point of time, we connected to a defibrillator. At the same time, we asked for a 12, 12 lead ECG and took the blood samples. Uh, the defibrillator showed uh, sinus tachy at 140 mmHg, hmm. 140 beats per minute. What do you mean by sinus tachycardia? Uh, sinus tachycardia is uh, a sinus wave, uh, uh, P followed by QRS, narrow QRS complex. Okay. QRS complex tachycardia, but it is in sinus rhythm mm -hmm. because P waves are there everywhere. P wave is followed by QRS complex every beat. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, possibly sinus tachycardia, it is not supraventricular tachycardia. And then coming to the disability, at this point, no intervention has been made. And coming to the D disability, patient was having full GCS, E4, B5, M6, and the patient was having bilaterally reactive pupils. Mm -hmm. And exposure part, patient was ephebrile and hypothermia was prevented mm -hmm. by giving blanket. So coming to the adjuncts to the primary survey, uh, we asked for the VBG, which was withdrawn at the time. In VBG, the patient has no acid-based disorder, but the potassium was 3.2. What has it been a base disorder you expect in various Any acidosis? Of Normally, what is a common uh, metabolic uh, change, derange derangement you see in hypokalemia? Hypokalemia. Common. Alkalosis. Why alkalosis? Because in alkalosis, the. When potassium is low, what is a problem occurring in your body? Hydrogen ions. So, intracellular acidification Acidity. to try to compensate or to try to compensate that body will try to remove more acid. So, there will be more alkali retention, retention in the kidneys. So, ultimately it will lead to alkalosis. That is a common condition where, where you have hypokalemia, commonly it produces alkalosis. But there are some conditions where acidosis is associated with hypokalemia. Mm. They are very important. What are the conditions? If you have somebody who no. hypokalemia and acidosis, DK. what are the decay? Okay, decay of potassium can be low and uh, acidosis is associated with that. Something similar renal to tubular tubular renal tubular acidosis. There also you get acidosis and hypokalemia. hypokalemia. Okay, so that two important things <coughs> you should remember. If you see the GI symptoms, somebody okay. have vomiting, what is a common metabolic derangement? Alkalosis. Alkalosis. Somebody is having diarrhea, who is having hypokalemia, what is the common uh, metabolic yes. de derangement? It is acid acidosis. acidosis. Okay. So, like that we can even make a diagnosis from the ABG itself. Okay. So, here potassium is low, he is having muscle tingling numbness, he is immediately come to the hospital. ABG does not show any acid base derangement at present. What is the pH? pH was 7.37. 7.37 is slightly towards the lower side. Okay, not on the upper side. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, that doesn't mean that he is having alkalosis or acidosis, whatever it is. It is in the normal range, but towards the nor uh, lower. Uh, lower range. Okay, so if you, some, after some time, if you see, sometimes it can change. But now it is normal. Mm -hmm. So, on uh, further, uh, in the ECG also, in the 12 lead ECG also, the patient was having sinus tachycardia. There are no any uh, rhythm change. Okay. So, normally ECG, somebody is having hypokalemia. What are the ECG changes you expect? First, initially we see flattening of the T waves. Common things. Tachycardia is one of the common problem. Mostly it is supraventricular tachycardia, but normal tachycardia is common. Then only, in a severe hypokalemia only, you are telling the changes which will occur. Mm. Okay. What are the changes? Flattening of the T wave, mm. uh, form a U wave coming mm. and uh, U wave comes uh, which area? After T before. After T, which all leads? Lateral leads. Lateral leads? V4, V5. Ah, V4, V3, V4 is the classical areas you get, but you can get even lateral leads after T wave. Okay. Then? Ah, continue. Uh, yeah, and then uh, widening of the cure. Hmm. Then? 
ST depression. Okay. This patient does not have anything, only tachycardia is there. And then uh, potassium is low. So, tachycardia is one of the a- earliest finding. But what you are seeing mostly is a severe hypokalemia. They come to hospital only if there is a severe hypokalemia. By the time you get all the changes, like most classical finding is UV. Okay. Uh, coming to the secondary survey, sir, the patient had no any known comorbidities. Hmm. And uh, patient has no any drug allergy. Hmm. Patient is not on any current medications. Hmm. Pa- uh, the coming now to you the know that uh, okay, secondary survey is okay. Now you know that patient's potassium is low. Hmm. Now which all areas you'll focus? You know that potassium is hmm. low. You know that pot- low potassium can produce some problem in your body. So you have to focus. Okay. Where you'll focus? Uh, we'll focus at the. Uh, there are two important areas uh, and GA. muscles and heart. heart. heart These are two important things an ER physician will do. See, muscles are important, heart is important. Third one is abdomen. Mm-hmm. Okay, muscle, what is the problem? Muscles uh, usually in hypokalemia, paralysis. So, muscle, muscle can have paralysis. That occurs at what level of potassium? Severe range to severe means what? Uh, less three, than two point five. Okay. Less than two point five. Okay. Severe. So less than two point five patient develops muscle weakness. Mm-hmm. But why we are worried in emergency room because of muscle weakness? What is the respiratory problem? Respiratory muscles. Respiratory paralysis mm-hmm. that produces what? Suppose somebody is having severe hypokalemia. He develops uh, uh, diaphragmatic weakness. He can develop respiratory distress. What it will produce? Respiratory distress, hypoxic and breath, breathing difficulty. Hypoxia and afterwards it will produce uh, acido, respiratory acidosis. Initially it will be only hypoxic. Okay. So you have to see that also in ABG. But this patient is having only muscle tingling, numbness, all these things. That is a earliest sign of hypokalemic paralysis. Only if the potassium is very low, like less than 2.5, they develop paralysis. That doesn't mean that he's uh, like he the diagnosis is something else. Okay, mm-hmm. so before that he had come to the hospital, that's all. Okay, continue that. So, muscles are very important. Heart, we already told it can produce arrhythmia, various mm-hmm. types of arrhythmia. Uh, uh, abdomen, what will happen? Abdomen, uh, like constipated. Worsening. So, they have low uh, m- Peristal- movements, peristaltic movement, and in a chronic hypokalemia, they can develop obstruction. In, uh, obstruction. Pseudo obstruction, it is called. Okay. Yes. So, here numbness is there, that's all. There is no muscle weakness, actual muscle weakness is not there. Single respirate, single uh, breath count you have to take normally. Okay. Uh, the uh, events which are occurring leading to this uh, coming to the ER was patient had uh, high intake food. So, common problem in hypokalemia is common problems. Like one is vomiting, diarrhea. That produces large amount of loss of potassium. Second thing is, you lose blood, potassium through the kidneys. That also we'll discuss after. Third one, you are told the patient has taken large amount of carbohydrate diet. What will happen to the potassium? You, if you suppose your carbohydrates are suddenly increased, glucose is suddenly increased. High what increase happen? insulin production and high no. Vitamin. So you have seen diabetic ketoacidosis, mm-hmm. high blood sugar, 700, 800. What will happen to the uh, potassium there? Potassium, uh, it will be shifted. Shifted. This is called a shift hypokalemia. Actually, the, there is no loss. Body is not losing. Adequate potassium is there. Suddenly, you are taking ca- high carbohydrate meal. The potassium which is there in the blood, it will be suddenly shifted to cells. So, acutely patient develops hypokalemia. Okay. But uh, after sometimes, if the sugar comes down not to normal, it will shift back to the uh, normal position itself. So, some patients develop severe weakness. Some patients develop uh, numbness, tingling after a heavy carbohydrate meal. And then this patient had taken a heavy carbohydrate meal. He has come to the hospital. Potassium is only 3.2. And he has explained all the symptoms. But he has not developed the weakness. Mm-hmm. But uh, if the sugars are very, very high, then again he may develop weakness. Okay. Uh, okay. So, the, that is a presentation. Somebody has taken high carbohydrate meal. He come to the hospital with a total muscle tingling, numbness. There is no weakness. Potassium is only 3.3. 3.2. Possibly, we think that this numbness, tingling is and all due to is all due to hypokalemia. hypokalemia. What other problems muscles can develop if you have if your potassium is low? What will happen to the blood supply to the muscles? Reduction in rhabdomyolysis. Blood, uh, rab- blood supply will reduce. So, if the blood supply is reduced, if you try to move around, 
then patient develops rhabdomyolysis that may produce acidosis okay so that is a secondary problem okay here nothing had happened patient immediately came to the hospital how do you evaluate suppose you get somebody is having muscle tingling numbness he has taken a high carbohydrate meal you, you have done an abg and found out that uh, potassium is low acid base uh, there is no mm. d arrangements so what is the next investigation you will ask from the patient urine quit okay urine potassium is most important investigation what is the importance of urine potassium so that we can see if there is a loss uh, you can see whether there is a renal loss or something okay so we have three entities one patient has a loss of potassium either through gastric root or kidney root second thing is you are not taking potassium third thing is shift of potassium here we had to rule out renal loss how do you know the renal loss is there or not trans tubular gradient is a different that, that is no need to calculate you see the urine potassium if the urine potassium is more than 20 milliequivalents when there is hypokalemia okay suppose you have normal kalemia you can lose potassium through the urine suppose you have a hypokalemia kidney should try to preserve it but if, even when your potassium is low body is losing large amount of potassium through the urine then it is a renal loss, renal loss. so more than 20 milliequivalents tell you that potassium is lost through the kidney here what is our urine potassium here a patient had actually oh he could he could not take okay so uh, suppose the urine potassium is less then reason is something else if the urine potassium is more than 20 milligrams then it is renal loss yeah. suppose the urine potassium is more than 20 milligrams what are the common reasons it, uh, more what is you will take ask immediately if there is any sick two important histories you have to take what are the two important histories and examination one is whether the patient is having hypertension or not that is one important thing second thing for hypertension whether he is taking any diuretic or not if he is taking diuretic then potassium loss is through the due to the diuretic itself suppose he is not taking any tablet and his bp is very high potassium is very low urine potassium is very high what is your diagnosis little uh-huh. Con Con syndrome. Syndrome. Con it syndrome. is mostly adrenal adenoma yeah. suppose the patient is very obese buffalo hump is there the lower limbs are weak and bp is very high potassium is very high in the urine hypokalemia then what is the diagnosis cushing, cushing syndrome okay like that you can see the patient and make a diagnosis you can see the abg and make a diagnosis you can see the uh, history and make a diagnosis in hypokalemia okay so here urinary potassium we have not checked but we have got a strong history of high carbohydrate intake carbohydrate intake and suddenly he develop symptoms of hypokalemia but there is no weakness so it is possibly shift hypokalemia that is because of the high glucose content potassium has shifted to the cells and acutely he develop hypokalemia in the blood okay so how do you treat that yeah first initially was uh, starting the potassium correction to mm-hmm. most important what are the most important problems you are going to address here first one is ecg 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 changes are the important problem in hypokalemia both in hyperkalemia and hypokalemia ecg problems are very important second thing is he is having muscle tingling numbness but there is no weakness the so most important thing is now here the yeah. ecg change ECG. so how do you treat this patient We're starting the iv correction of how do you correct you uh, have iv line ten. how many uh, what I, iv route you prefer you have a peripheral line so initially line. you have only peripheral line yeah. you have to give through that and if possible you have to put a central Sorry. line so here it is 3.2 normal is 3.5 3.5 to 5.5 okay so how much deficiency will be there 0.3 deficiency is you are seeing in body how much deficiency will be there 0.3 into the body 0.3 deficiency in blood 10 milliequivalents 0.1 means 10 milliequivalents each point uh, each point 3 will have 100 milliequivalents deficiency so 1 milliequivalent deficiency means it will be 300 milliequivalents so each point 3 deficiency from 3.5 is 100 milliequivalents okay so his requirement is 100 milliequivalents but we know that it is only a transient shift of potassium from Uh, blood to cells okay. here if you give some time it will revert back to normal only concern is ecg changes are there so we have to give some potassium but the deficiency if we calculate it is 100 milliequivalents mm-hmm. 
so you can give only maximum 40 milli equivalents through, through a peripheral line so now you have to have you have to put a peripheral line and start 40 milli equivalents through that each kcl contains how much potassium 20 milli equivalents so if you add uh, two ampules then it will become 40, 40 milli equivalents you can give it through the peripheral line more than that what will happen more than the sudden uh, sudden uh, here also the sudden no? it produces all the like phlebitis more than 40 milliequivalents it produces peripheral phlebitis okay so up to 40 milliequivalents you can give through the peripheral line then you can watch the patient suppose the patient improves with that 40 milliequivalents that is more than enough because we already know that it is a shift hypokalemia after if you give some time it will shift back to the normal place and it will become normal that's why after some time even without treatment patient has become normal okay now suppose it is a uh, a severe problem like muscle weakness is there, arrhythmia is there, there is a urinary loss of potassium. What is the route you prefer? Central, central line. Central there you need to have a central line, more potassium requiring central line. What is the daily requirement of potassium? 60 to 80 Your body weight? Uh, 1 milli equivalent per kg body. So that is a daily requirement and here the patient is having 1.3 means around 100 milli equivalents. So he requires 160 milli equivalents on this day. But we know that it will shift back to the normal place and he may require only 60 mm. milli equivalents. That can be given by even oral route. Initially 40 milli equivalents you can give, then oral correction may be enough. Mm. Suppose he is persistently losing potassium through the urine and he has developed hypokalemia here and he is having some hypertension like BP is 130, 90. What are the next investigation you will ask? Next, uh, we'll ask for the adrenaline. How do you investigate? Cot serum cortisol. Serum cortisol only look you can see. Obese patient, buffalo, mm -hmm. humbo, fat abdomen, uh, thin legs, striae. Then you can ask for cortisol. Otherwise, cortisol alone is not a good investigation. You can do that, but what is the most important thing? We are, you are told corn syndrome. Mm -hmm. How do you investigate corn syndrome? Aldosterone. Serum, aldosterone and serum, uh, what is that, kidney? Uh, renin. 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 renin and aldosterone. Okay, in renin, uh, which conditions renin will increase, which condition aldosterone will increase? Aldosterone. Suppose it's a kidney problem and hypertension, hypokalemia, renin will increase. Mm -hmm. Okay, suppose it's a suprarenal problem like uh, hyperaldosteronism due to Korn syndrome, aldosterone mm -hmm. will be increased. Okay, so you have to always ask for a serum renin and serum aldosterone and potassium loss you have to prevent. So you are investigating all these things. Mm -hmm. But suppose there is a urinary loss of potassium, you have to prevent that. Mm. How do you prevent that? If they suppose already diuretics, you stop. Uh, but but you, you need to give diuretics sometimes. So, uh, what diuretic is? Potassium sparing diuretics. What is a diuretic? Spironolactone or? Epilinone. 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 What is the advantage of epilinone over spironolactone? It even has a... It that. produces... The most important side effect of uh, spironolactone is? Gynecomastia. Mm -hmm. This epilinone does not have that property. That's all. Okay. So you can give uh, spironolactone or epilinone if there is a renal loss of potassium. Okay. What is a common electrolyte uh, imbalance associated with potassium deficiency? Magnesium. Magnesium. Hypokalemia. Hypokalemia is mostly sorry. Hypomagnesemia is mostly associated with hypokalemia. So you have to correct hypokalemia. Then only you can correct the hypomagnesemia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is one thing. Suppose this patient is having hepatic encephalopathy. What is the importance of hypokalemia? Hypokalemia can precipitate hepatic. Okay, it's, it's a trigger for, trigger for hepatic encephalopathy aggravation. So that has to be corrected. corrected. So that also we should uh, take care. So this patient is a hy mostly hy hypokalemic periodic paralysis, but paralysis has not occurred before that he has come. He had come to the hospital. That is because triggered by a high carbohydrate meal. Okay. So that is the clue here. If you don't take the history, you will not get anything. So history is very important because somebody has taken a high carbohydrate meal and he had developed tingling and numbness like this. You ask the past history of similar feature. He is having any past history? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. similar history. So here, similar history is there means it is mostly hypokalemic periodic paralysis. Yes, you have to ask the family history also because most of these standalopathies are running in the family. So you ask the family history also. Then previous history is there. But fortunately, you have not developed paralysis. Yeah. So 
सिंस ही इज नॉट डेवलपिंग पैरालिसिस वी हेट एडवाइज द पेशेंट नॉट टू टेक हेवी कार्बोहाइड्रेट मिल सपोज ही इज टेकिंग हेवी कार्बोहाइड्रेट मिल ही हेज टू टेक अडिशनल पोटासियम इन द डायट दैट्स ऑल बिकॉज देर इज नो मेजर ट्रीटमेंट फॉर शिफ्ट टाइप ऑफ कैलमी यू कैन ओनली एजुकेट द पेशेंट दैट्स ऑल ओके एनीथिंग एल्स यू वॉन्ट टू एड सो ईच पॉइंट थ्री एम एल इज हंड्रेड एम एल एम मिली इक्वल डेफिशियंसी इन आवर बॉडी ओके ओके थैंक यू